bucket list is one of the things that I've always wanted, and I'm just so glad to be included in this. It means everything to me. Well, you know, we're not usually included in um, things that focus on uh, creativity and excellence, so we have to do it for ourselves. It's such an honor to be able to celebrate our mama Anjanu this way. I've been looking up to her for as long as I can remember, especially in college. She kind of paved the way for my career to look the way it does. So it's an honor to be able to celebrate her and Nia and Quinta and Shantae. It's a blessing. Excited to be here. I know that my my TV mom, my castmate, Miss Anjanu Ellis, is being honored tonight or uh, this afternoon. So I'm very excited for her. <laughs> Who am I rooting for? You know what? I I think this year's slate of films, this this season's films, are pretty incredible. So honestly, everybody, I just I would love to see everybody win something. I'm very very excited. But I really hope Mr. Will wins. Um, I love him a lot, and I'm so proud of him. And I know he works super super hard. So of course, being a part of King Richard, I hope King Richard wins. The one thing, if there is a central word that describes Ingenue Ellis, it's integrity. She don't care about money. She don't care about, you know, making our day on set. She cares about people. She cares about treating people right. She does not play injustice. She does not play unfairness. She does not play brutality, verbal or otherwise. And at the core of Ingenue is a fierce, noble integrity. And what is beautiful about being friends with Ingenue is she demands it of you in the most loving way. And in the few years that, that we've been together, um, you know, she's awakened a thing in me where she mirrors back to me the best version of myself. She mirrors back to me what I'm supposed to be. You know, damn it, I said I wasn't gonna be up here crying too. <laughs> you know, but it's been my honor to work with you, to protect you, to deliver love to the world with you. Um, Ingenue is very quiet. Um, so she lets me do most of the talking, which works really well for <laughs> our relationship. But She's always filling me, not with words, but with what it feels like to have 10 toes down. And she keeps me focused on what we're supposed to be doing, you know? And it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure um, to walk these last couple of years with you. The movie, we had to shut down. And we came back six months later with COVID protocols and all that. And so we've been, we like a little bit like war buddies over this, <laughs> over this past couple of years. So um, uh, I'm happy, um, honored, and I am overwhelmed to be able to stand here with you, for you, beside you. Um, my good friend, Anjanou Ellis. Why? Why do I do it? Because I work in a profession that when tasked to tell my history, black American history, I'm not talking about made up stories, I'm talking about black American history, it looks to other cultures to do the telling. They hide behind 
words like universality, training, and pedigree, ignoring the pedigree of black Americans like Oscar Michaud, Paul Robeson, Ossie Davis, Ruby Dee, Lawrence Fishburne, Angela Bassett. That's my pedigree. What, what qualifies you to tell black American history is not trauma, it is not pain. It cannot be reduced to enslavement, colonization. Appropriation can be appropriation even when there are black faces, even within the diaspora, and it works both ways. Why do I do it in the dark? I write, and I tell stories that give black women primacy. In other words, we are centered. We are not plot points, we are not, we are the plot. I have been told my stories are too dark. And that darkness means that it's too black. Black people not looking to or outside of themselves for identity or determination. To them, hope does not look like a black woman. But I know better. My hope comes from my mother and my sister and my grandmother. And I don't know anybody else. Working in the dark, tearing in the dark require, requires an incessant scream of I'm here. Dark matter is unseen, but it's here in the way that Seely screams at Mr. when he hurls black at her like it's a curse. And she says, I may be black, I may be ugly, but I'm here. And see, I'll change that and I'll say, yes, I am black. There is nothing ugly about me and I'm here. Listen. I, I've been saying that my experience with working with Will has shown me what it is to work with a superstar, but also more than anything to work with a good man. He did not have to be here today. You know, we've had a couple of years together and, you know, there's a spirit and Anjanou is really strong, but she's really delicate. You know, and I love being able to put a little, put, just put a little hedge around her. You know what I mean? I love what it feels like to stand with her and stand beside her. You know, and like I said out there, it's like she uh, brings out the best in me. And I think that's the highest compliment of friendship or relationship in general that, that, there can be. You know, I think that it's truly important to have a moment to recognize, as Anjanou was talking about in, in her speech, to these spectacular performances and these spectacular contributions can sometimes happen in the dark and they unrecognized, you know, and, you know, it's amazing. Even for, for us, we talked about this a lot, even in dealing with Miss Orsine, how we missed some of the contribution because the contribution was powerful, but quiet, you know, and I just think it's important to, to bring some of the things that may have been missed and just taking a cursory look, some of the things that may have been missed to, to honor our own and to elevate and illuminate uh, some of the things that, that happened in the dark. Let me tell you, and I'm not saying this, uh, you, know, you know, actors always say, well, you know, it's about the work and it's about the people. It, yeah. it's so is not, like, I love being able to be here for you. Hello, I love being able to, to show up for Venus and Serena. Absolutely. You know, I saw Sanaya and Demi and Michaela out there, mm -hmm. you know, and for, for me, as, as true as it's ever been for me, it's like the awards can come or not, but I, I've already won. He's gonna win the Oscar, I'm sorry. <laughs>